Warning. The following podcast is utter nonsense and may cause agoraphobia, kleptomania, insomnia, and oppositional defiance disorder. We are required by law to provide you with this disclaimer for hazardous materials. Welcome back to Hazardous Materials, the show that doesn't quite have a subtitle yet in our new and thrilling era. I am Gideon Gonzalez, and joining with me as always... Casey Johnson. And uh, today we're going to be doing a little deep dive into some of the, maybe not quite obscure characters, maybe some of the fresher ones that were just announced at the uh, Big Disney shareholder meeting where they announced a lot of stuff. What, like 50? A lot of stuff. There yeah. was uh, the Marvel shows um, like uh, Armor Wars, Secret mm-hmm. Invasion... Um, they talked a lot about the stuff that we already know about, like what if Moon Knight, Miss Marvel. And in these trying times where we are addicted to content and require it to be shoveled into our trough on a daily basis by whatever monopolistic corporation of your choice, we got some good ones. <laughs> we did. Uh, we got some good ones. And with it, uh, Kevin Feige took time to introduce some of the characters that have already been cast. And for the casual Marvel Cinematic Universe viewer, there's going to be some head scratch moments. Like, who the hell is Kang the Conqueror? Oh, but I love that guy. Who the hell is America Chavez and why is she important? She's great. Love her. Uh, what is the TVA? Because it had it on his shirt, but they never explained oh, it. Oh, that's, uh, that's the yellow wire on your TV. Uh, no, that's, that's, that's a component. No, no, <laughs> no, we're going to explain to you what all these things are. We're going to explain to you what the TVA is and how it is actually pretty cool. We may see more of it later down the line, especially, I think, in She-Hulk, but we'll get into Fingers that. Crossed. Um, but first thing that we're going to tackle is the finally revealed uh, character that our boy Christian Bale is going to be playing. Yes. In Thor Love and Thunder, which is Gore the God Butcher. Who has a very metal sounding name. He does have a uh, name. He first shows up in Jason Aaron and Asad Ribic's Thor God of Thunder series, mm-hmm. where he's introduced as the big bad with with a name like that. He's got to be. Yeah, I mean, you're a Gore the God Butcher. There's there's going to be some, some so he's missing got, characters in your cast. He's got the, uh, the classy... Or not classy, the classic, maybe a little classy, angsty atheist origin of, oh, gods exist and they didn't help me. I'll kill them all. So this is atheist God. Yes. So, yeah, he's not a God. He's not a, a God. he's an alien dude, a big gnarly guy and uh, kind of like Thanos or your beta ray bills, just a big buff alien. Oh, okay. And uh, he makes it his mission to kill all the gods with a uh, sword called the All Black. Which, that's not Edgelord at all. No, no, it's not. <laughs> and here's what's kind of funny, speaking of Edgelord. Uh, it got tied into recent Edgelord poster boy, uh, Null. Yes. And that got retconned into being his first appearance. That Donnie, that, uh, Donnie Cates made it so Null made the, uh, the All Black and it's a symbiote sword. It's silly, but I believe. We're not going to get into how ridiculous symbiotes have gotten. We're not, yeah, we're not here to talk we're about We're going to talk to you why Gore the God Butcher is not only important to uh, uh, the MCU, but why it probably leads directly to Natalie Portman getting the hammer. Yeah, so uh, Gore the God Butcher, his whole ethos was that gods hold mortals back, and that's why he wants to kill them all. Yeah. So uh, the way Thor lost Mjolnir and how it found its way to Jane Mew Foster, Mew. yes, I'll never Mew, that. <laughs> uh, was Nick Fury whispered in his ear, Gore was right, and that gave Thor that seed of self-doubt, and he couldn't lift Mjolnir anymore. Was that what happened in that? Yeah. I always wondered what happened. Yep, so Gore was right, and Thor lost lost his mojo, and then uh, without without Mjolnir, then uh, Malekith cut his arm off, and he had a little destroyer arm. Like yeah, Odin. he had a golden arm for a very long time. It was pretty dope. It was pretty, pretty he cool. He only recently got rid of it when he became the... Uh, the, uh, the the, oh the All-Father. The Big Papa. Was that the All-Father? He, he got his arm back? I thought he it was got the he Odin got Force. Galactus's power cost. No, it was before that. <coughs> yeah, he got he, he got the, the Papa power. And so he Papa got power. the arm back. Yeah, that was in War of the Realms, I believe. I wonder if he got to sacrifice an eye for the Papa power. <laughs> but yeah, Gore the God Butcher. Uh, big fan favorite Thor villain. Like, he's only been around. He's been around for less than a decade. I was really pulling for Christian Bale to be Dario Agar, my favorite... Uh, Corporate menace Minotaur from our Immortal Hulk uh, reviews. Precisely, but uh, I'll, I'll take take Gore the God Butcher. Should we'll be take a, the God Butcher. Should be a good flick. Next up on our list is the villain that was announced in Ant Man the Wasp: Quantumania. Great title, love it. I love this. I, I love this. Um, we're they're they're using a big tag villain. 
Uh, people that read Marvel Comics know who Kang the Conqueror is. This is our... Oh, do you mean Ramatut? Uh, I mean Scarlet Centurion. Do you mean Immortus? <laughs> Kang the Conqueror goes through many names because he is a long, livid, and time-traveling kind of dude. Um, I really expected him to show up in an Avengers title because that's the quality of villain he is. He's big league. Yeah. For him to show up in Ant-Man and the Wasp, I'm like, where are they going I with I think this? it's just like starting it. Like, I think we will see kind of a lower power tier Kang in this movie. Mm -hmm. And then we'll get a further down the timeline Kang show up in an Avengers movie. So Again, maybe even Immortus. Maybe my boy Ramatut. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Kang the Conqueror has gone through many names. Uh, he's supposedly the uh, the ancestor of uh, Reed Richards? Uh, descendant. Descendant of yes. Reed Richards. Okay. N Okay, he's from the future, that's right. Yes, Okay, he's from so. the way the hell future. King of Conqueror has got kind of a unique look, and he's definitely sporting the classic 60s color scheme of yeah. maroon and green. A gr excellent uh, Jack Kirby creation right there. Yeah. Beautiful outfit. Weird mask. Yes. Weird, weird mask. I'm kind of curious to see how they, they actually, do uh, in those early In those early appearances in FF, they play with the idea that maybe it's Doctor Doom in the future. I'm they, buying it. They really play coy with it. I think later it turns out that he's a descendant of both Reed and Doom. So, Well, he's uh, being played in this version by uh, Jonathan Majors, who uh, recently came to fame with uh, Lovecraft Country. Yes. Excellent, excellent show. And Jonathan Majors is awesome in it as Atticus. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. And I think that you're right. It might get to be something big. Because as we know, everything in Ant-Man apparently influences the entire universe, including that rat. Yes, very important. Very important. Um, and uh, hey, you know, with uh, with Cassie Lang showing up, in, also in Ant Man, I and see with, going with this. Uh, Kate Bishop being in the Hawkeye show, and another character we're going to mention later. Uh huh. I don't think it's outside the realm of possibility that we might get Iron Lad, another identity of Kang. Yes, Iron Lad uh, was part of the Young Avengers lineup, which involves Cassie from Ant Man and uh, America Chavez, which we we're going to talk about here mm -hmm. in just a little bit. Um, this is before he became an ass. Yeah, he sees what the future holds. I think Amortis shows him what the future holds, and he's like, oh no, I don't want to turn into that. So he goes back in time and founds the Young Avengers mm -hmm. as Iron Lad. And then uh, he takes himself out of the timeline, and they take his cool future armor, and they put it on the Vision, and the mm -hmm. Vision gets rebooted as him. And I loved Kid Vision. Kid Vision was great. Yeah, that's how they did bring a Vision back. I was that, didn't they? Uh, very mad when they killed off my boy Iron Lad, Kid Vision, and brought back Vanilla Vision. Marvel's had a lot of problems with uh, Young Avengers. It just seems like they've never had confidence in the title. Which is weird because it. Oh, I think right out of the gate it had a ton of clout. Like. Alan Heinberg was a like a TV writer mm -hmm. and he also worked. I think at that point he'd already worked on the Wonder Woman title to pretty big success. And he worked on the Wonder Woman movie. And who was drawing that? That was uh, Jim Chung. I love his. Stuff. Yes, absolutely. Excellent stuff. I I'm always excited to see Jim Chung on a title. Once again, he normally just does covers these days, but never so often does interior work. So we're expecting this King of the Conqueror uh, character to become just as well known from deep obscurity that Rocket Raccoon goes was. I remember talking to my coworkers about Rocket Raccoon and just getting this scrunched up little face is like, in two years, your kids are gonna know who this character is, I assure you. And you are gonna know who this character is. <laughs> Inescapable. Uh Kang the Conqueror, keep your eye out for this because he's probably gonna be all over the place. I I like you said, I think he's gonna go out and, and infest the other MCU uh, films with his variety of different identities. So next up on our list is a uh, a less historic character than King the Conqueror, but uh, she made her debut about 11 years ago in the pages of Vengeance in 2009. And that is uh, America Chavez, who will be played by Sochi Gomez in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, an excellent title. Uh, yeah, this is actually um, one of Marvel's big... LGBTQ uh, characters when she first came out. Yes, correct. There's a lot of to do to be made about uh, her sexuality. I don't remember if that was the case in Vengeance, but certainly played a big part in Young Avengers and uh, also in her solo series as well. Uh, she comes from an alternate dimension where I think it's all women or at least mm -hmm. like same sex couples are the norm. Yeah. And she gets kind of Superman through her little star portals to our dimension. And there is a lot of Superman to her, but there's. <clears throat> She has a very stylized 
power set. Yeah, so uh, her primary power, besides like, she's got like your standard flying brick, like invincibility, super strength, and flight. Mm -hmm. But kind of her like signifier is that she can punch holes in dimensions and star star shaped. shaped. Yeah, so she makes (laughs) these big old star shaped portals. My uh, my favorite usage of that power was in uh, Al Ewing, Kenneth Rockefort, and oh, I'm blanking on the last artist who actually drew this scene. I want to say it was Steve Pugh. But I'm not 100 percent sure on that. Hopefully, I got that right. Or no, Travel Foreman. It's Travel Foreman. And when they brought her out, there were uh, Marvel was trying to reuse a trademark they hadn't used in a while, which was Miss America. Yes. Uh, so the scene in question is America has to get from one co- one point of the universe to like way the hell out there Mm -hmm. so she uses her dimension punching powers to access a dimension of pure kinetic energy aka the punch dimension where cyclops's eye beams come out right so she enters this solid red field that just rockets her in a straight line from point a to point b and it's ah, I love it. I've seen her pull the Rick uh, Sanchez maneuver too, where she just keeps punching and punching, going through different universes. Yeah, to get to the right one. Yeah, uh, America is ah, such a fun character. I love when she's paired off with Kate Bishop, which is pretty often. She yes. tends to follow her around to like West Coast Avengers and all that. But yeah, I really feel like Ultimates was kind of the best usage of her, just because it was a big cosmic team, and it was like a, it felt like good recognition. Because, like, yeah. the Young Avengers typically are pretty street level, as with the West Coast Avengers. But this was like, yeah, this is a big power character. It's like, oh. when, it's like when Luke Cage got put on the Avengers. It's like, yeah, how, this is a no-brainer. Hey, you know, I want to talk about the other Young Avengers, but I feel like I can't without spoiling a particular series that's coming out. You know what I'm talking about? Which series? WandaVision. Oh, yeah. Maybe we should maybe we should hold off until we should probably hold off on that one. Watch that Avengers show and get back special. to us. <laughs> <laughs> and next one we're going to be talking about is not a character, but we're going to talk a little bit about what we saw uh, in the background of the Loki uh, special, uh, especially the uh, the scene with uh, Owen Wilson in it, mm-hmm. which uh, had the letters TVA. And I really thought that the trailer was going to explain what that is but it didn't no nope. it didn't tell you what tv stood for it didn't tell you what he is or why they got loki but we'll tell you uh the, the tva is the time variance authority basically the time cops of the marvel universe they go around uh fixing continuity gaffes which was uh the initial joke in walt simonson's thor was that uh, the tva was just mark grunwald iconic marvel writer and editor who was also a huge continuity hound so he was always being like oh no this you got to fix this you got to fix that so he made a little joke on his editor who was always like, hey, you can't write, you can't do this thing in Thor because this thing happened in this one issue from the 60s. Indeed. So uh, Owen Wilson's character is going to be uh, named Mobius M. Mobius. And uh, he's a, a mid-level bureaucrat in this organization. From what I understand, um, they, they are going to enlist Loki to fix the problems of his presence. And that's why they got him in that cool uh, cop suit. Yeah. His little... And Normal the uh, suit there. The uh, great D.B. Cooper bit. I love the D.B. Cooper from the back end. <laughs> uh, here's another thing. Um, oh God, I don't know if we should insult their intelligence by trying to explain D.B. Cooper to them. But uh, Basically, he hijacked a plane and disappeared. Yeah, he got a whole bunch of money. Uh, he had a very iconic look because at the time D.B. Cooper uh, happened, um, that they only had a sketch. And the sketch artist had dark hair, sunglasses, kind of a... Uh, uh, an oval uh, shaped face and that's exactly what M- Mr. Middleston looked like at the very end of that when he jumped out. It's like, oh my god, that's D.B. Cooper. That's hilarious. They never found uh, D.B. Cooper. They found some of his money and there's uh, there's theories that, oh, he got away and he's got all his money or that he probably died because people shouldn't be jumping out of jetliners in parachutes. With big bags of money. With big bags of money. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I also really liked the little shout out to the Vote Loki series when he's got his little army of uh, yes. different warriors throughout time at the end. And his button on. Yeah, it was fun uh, stuff. Yeah, it's suited. I like the fact that he's wearing his, uh, his the little, little horny horn. thing. Yeah. That's all. I'm really looking forward to Loki. I'm really glad that the, the, the show is showing up sooner rather than later. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got um, WandaVision coming out on the 15th of January. We've got uh falcon winter soldier coming out in march and then we got this show coming out in may oh wow they're really hammering them out huh well yeah i I guess when you got 10 shows on the horizon and when you got a pandemic that just pushes everything back your schedule gets a little compact when 2021 rolls around so uh i'm not arguing i'm I'm super excited for 2021 nothing else we'll have a lot of tv to consume (laughs) yes indeed um 
I also think um, only because TVA showed up in the comics with She-Hulk's solo series Mm -hmm. where they were basically accusing people and she would have to defend people to the TVA authority. I think that they're going to show up there, too, since apparently She-Hulk is going to be a cameo machine. I hope so. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah. And uh, next up on our list is uh, the newest member of the Iron Man legacy, uh, Ironheart Riri Williams, who we played by Dominique Thorne in a uh, self-titled Disney Plus series. Have we seen Dominique Thorne in anything else? I'm not familiar with her. I'm not so familiar with her either. Can't say that I am, but like younger uh, up-and-coming actress, so not yeah. to be surprising. But this is all about Riri Williams. So. Exactly. So uh, Riri Williams is a geni- child gen- prodigy uh, builds a set of Iron Man armor during Bendis's run and like pre- pretty early on. And when Iron Man dies in Civil War II, Reed goes into a Kryptonian hypersleep. She uh, takes up the name Ironheart, whips up her own cool suit of armor and is flying around. And that era of Ironheart didn't really grab me because no. Civil War II was happening. So it wasn't great. But I think like a lot of Bendis created characters, she got infinitely better when passed off to another creator. That being Eve Ewing and Luciano Vecchio, who give her a awesome redesigned outfit. I, I love, love this. Yeah, suit. the pink armor is pink, awesome. black, and uh, was it maroon? I can't remember. It's like a real, a very strong, unique silhouette. Great color right. scheme, and, and it had a heart logo on the armor. Yes, we're just gonna put that up here. And Eve Ewing out. is excellent, excellent writer. Love reading her pro stuff online, and she really like kind of took ownership of that character. And she actually went on to join uh, that new teen group. Champions. Champions. Yes. Also a very good usage of her. Yeah. Jim Zub did a lot of great work there. Which we also now find uh, Miss Marvel, Miles Morales, mm-hmm. young Cyclops, which I'm sure is going to confuse a few people, but don't worry, he's gone. <laughs> um, it was a else? phase. Yeah. Who else was in that? Was uh, it the, Amadeus um, Cho was there. Yeah, that's uh, right. Kid Nova was there. Uh, Viv Vision was there. Uh, they're actually at the center of an event right now called Outlawed, where uh, after a big, very Civil War style teen hero adventure goes wrong, mm-hmm. uh, Kamala Khan gets put into a coma during it, actually. And they outlaw teen heroes. Yes. And they call it Kamala's Law because she gets knocked out as Kamala and it becomes a whole big thing. And of course, <laughs> excuse me. And of course, this becomes a uh, the perfect opportunity to blow off the dust of the power pack. Yes, uh, comic. A lot of, lot of teen heroes getting a resurgence in the spotlight once yeah. again. But uh, yeah, Ironheart, I think there's a lot of potential for that character there. I know uh, a lot of dummies online being like, oh, why isn't it Morgan Stark? Because Morgan Stark's a child. Like, it's, yeah. it's ain't complicated. We've seen no... Uh, I, 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 I don't think there's been a single good conversation involving Morgan Stark since the character was introduced. Uh, no, I like, mean, it's, it's just all been bad takes all around. So, I mean, the, the whole idea of Morgan Stark, no, well, not the whole idea, but the name Morgan Stark really just comes from one of Tony's uh, less reputable cousins. Yeah. So it was and, and like it, the character, she wasn't really a character in the movie. She was mm-hmm. a plot device. So I don't get this rallying cry to turn a black character into a white girl legacy. But. Yeah. It's not it necessary. Is, yeah. I'm really looking forward to some of the uh, the the feel of Iron Man coming back in a TV show. Yeah, between this and Armor Wars, which uh, damn, I, I say I don't know if it's come up on the show before, but the only era of Iron Man that I really really like is when Rhodey was Iron Man. So getting a Don Cheadle starring War Machine, I hope he, I really hope he becomes Iron Man on the show. Like that's my number one hope is we get Rhodey wearing the red and gold. I'll do that bit where he's talking on the phone and goes, I knew Iron it. Man, let me grab him for you. And puts on his helmet. Yo. Because I've been sitting here waiting for you to finish <laughs> because I was going to bring that up. That's I, hilarious. God, Rhodey as Iron Man was such a good era. Yeah, and mis- I, I yeah hope Mr. Rhodes, can we please speak to Iron Man? Sure, one moment. This Yo. is Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> 10 out of 10. Yeah. Um, as, as you know, I'm not a big Iron Man guy, but I do like Iron Man supporting cast. So uh, killing off Tony Stark and allowing his supporting cast to blossom. Like, look how happy Hogan. He's having having the time of his life in those one Spider-Man of my, um, pictures. One of my friends growing up, uh, Armor Wars to him was like the Mutant Massacre is to me. It was like his favorite event. Yeah. And uh, so therefore, even though I didn't really get to read the whole thing, mm-hmm. I'm well versed in it just because I was inundated hey, by facts. My boy Stiltman's there. 
So was, you know, um, you know, I'm down for that. So I'm curious if we're actually going to see. You know, let me do a list here: uh, Stiltman, Stingray, uh, Titanium Man, uh, Crimson Dynamo, the Melter, Melter, the Unicorn. Yeah, all these characters going to go show up in some weird cameo fashion. Maybe, but uh, all I know is. I'm excited about the Iron Man franchise, which is not words I've ever said in my life. <laughs> All right, next up, we're going to talk about a character that's really actually already appeared uh, in uh, Captain Marvel as a child, mm -hmm. and it is uh, Monica Rambeau. Yes, uh, one of uh, one of both of our favorite characters. Yeah, uh, she is my Captain Marvel, my favorite character to hold the mantle. Uh, it's a competitive field because there's a lot of great captains out there, but uh, Monica is, I think, the best. She yeah, I mean, oh, sorry, I was about to tread on your words. <laughs> I was really say. trying not to. Um, but back in 1980, when the original Captain Marvel died, Marvel was really kind of sitting on this this IP with no real mm -hmm. direction to it. I mean, yeah, we had Miss Marvel, but she wasn't doing anything at the time either. So there was really no quick legacy on this. Yeah. So they came out. It was um, it was an Amazing Spider-Man Amazing annual. Spider-Man annual, I think, 16 by my boy Roger Stern, favorite Spider-Man writer yeah. and favorite Avengers writer. So I guess Monica, she, I forget the accident that gave her her powers. It involved cosmic rays. <laughs> it was like some machine cosmic rays, unimportant. What is important is what she did. Um, she Which got is whip ass. Yes, yeah, she did whip ass, but she got a costume out of a, uh, a Mardi Gras bin because mm -hmm. she was a New Orleans cop. And as a matter of fact, a lot of her storylines dealt with New Orleans until they you know, yanked her in. To uh, mid '80s uh, West Coast Avengers, I believe, and she was no, she wasn't a West Coaster. She is a mainline Avenger. Oh, Roger right. Stern was on the title. She became the leader of the Avengers. Yeah, and she oversaw, I would say, the greatest Avengers run of all time. You've got stuff like Under Siege in there, like you know, it's iconic stories. When they go to, when they go to Olympus and to go to go save Hercules, and Namor gets his arms broken by Neptune, that stuff rocks. Is is the siege you're talking about? Is that when the Masters of Evil storm the Avengers? Yes, and that is to me like the Avengers story. That is a really good story. Real, real good stuff. But so, uh, but back to Monica. Yeah, our our, our girl Monica um, was the was the child character in Captain Marvel. Now she's going to be in Captain Marvel two, but she's also going to be in Wanda Vision, which I was very surprised by. I'm very surprised because yeah. she has no connection to those characters whatsoever. Yeah. If, if but, there was going to be a show with uh, Monica Rambeau in it, I was hoping it was going to be a Next Wave, mm -hmm. which, ah, great, great, great comedy book that I've been praying for, like, an adult animated series take on. If you're watching this and you know all the comic characters we're talking about and you're just kind of watching this just to pass the time, but you don't know what Next Wave is, take the time to read Next Wave. It's like Shakespeare. But with much more punching. <laughs> yes. I one of my favorite covers ever is uh this one, uh where they're um they're, they're Civil War non crossover. Oh, when they're protesting Civil War? Yeah, Mark Millar licks goats. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. And I love the uh the bit where all the Civil War books have like a su a single color and mm -hmm. there's this plaid. <laughs> yeah, and it's like slightly askew and kind of ripped up a bit. So good. Uh, Next wave was was genius, and I'm really sad that there has not been a follow up to it. Well, uh, in Monica's appearances, they actually address that in Captain America and the Mighty Avengers, mm -hmm. where the Beyond Corporation comes back, and it because long for a long time, Next Wave was so goofy that Marvel didn't really treat it as canon, right? Even though it had the most popular versions of a lot of existing characters, right? And so they would take those versions of them, but then they would be play coy about it if the book was in canon. Uh, Captain Marvel and the Mighty Avengers, I believe Al Ewing was on the book at the time, made it so the Beyond Corporation just suppressed everyone's memories of the events. And so Monica remembers, and she gets her whole next wave look back, mm -hmm. which was really, really cool because uh, when Greg Land was doing Mighty Avengers, he couldn't be bothered to learn how to draw black hair, so he just traced some pictures of Halle Berry in the early 2000s. Is that what happened there? Yeah, so Monica lost her braids, but then when she remembers, she gets her braids back. It's really cool. Yeah, she started off with like a, a, a mid-80s afro. Yeah. Which looked great with the outfit that she was wearing. I, I love her little arm capes. Very yeah, fun. the little arm capes. Yes, exactly. Um, so we should probably explain a little bit about what she can do. Um, she's not... She's got energy powers, but they're not quite Captain Marvel. She can turn powers. into energy. She can transform into yeah. energy. So which, she can physically yeah. turn into light and pew. 
Yeah, so when um, she lost the uh, the title of Captain Marvel because Marvel wanted to give it to a legacy character, so they found a character named Legacy. Yeah, it turned God. out to be our old uh, Captain Marvel's son. And I love Genesis' run on the title. I did. And I, I thought Photon it. was a badass name. Peter David wrote it. Yeah. I was like, Photon was a great new name mm-hmm. for Monica. I uh, did not like Spectrum as a name for her. Yeah. I thought, especially because she already had Photon, which was a great name. Don't know why they need to change it. It was really kind of sad, too, because uh, once um, uh, Genus Vell lost the Captain Marvel title, he took her second title from her. So he became Photon. Oh, I didn't even know that. And that's what turned her into Spectrum. Oh, that's lame. It was I thought lame. Genesis... Genesis has been dead, though, hasn't he? Genesis dead. He's been dead for quite some time in yeah. Thunderbolt's uh, run. He's not really dead. They fractured his uh, persona and scattered amongst the universe, and they just never bothered to go He's back. He's functionally dead. He's functionally dead. He's been and dead And then uh, wasn't... Uh, uh, Phyla was Captain Marvel for a bit before she became Quasar, right? Right. A very yeah. short time. Yeah. I, I prefer her as Quasar. And then after that, uh, the it languished. It didn't go anywhere. And then and suddenly... Carol got it. Carol, I mean, yeah, Carol came by, and the, the first time that Captain Marvel was used on her was in a Spider-Man. It yeah. was um, Avenging Spider-Man number eight, number nine, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, somewhere in that ballpark. Yeah, and I was super excited about that, because yeah. I loved Carol Danvers, and I loved the Captain Marvel legacy. All the characters that have carried mm-hmm. Captain Marvel, I've loved, and but Carol's been my favorite. Yeah. I mean, I know that Monica's your favorite, and Not that's okay. Yet. Monica's I great. love Monica, too, and I love the fact that her outfit is kind of a version of the Captain Marvel outfit, except it's black and silver. Yeah. That's cool. It's real red. Um, but um, as far as what she's doing in WandaVision, I think that one scene of the, that woman talking to Wanda, and she goes, hi, neighbor. And she's like, who are you? And one, and the other one goes, I don't know. I'm pretty sure that's Monica Rambeau. I, I know she's the character that gets kind of like blasted through a building at one point in the trailer yeah. and like kind of skids through a field. I, so I think that they're going to use that whole thing to kind of introduce her and maybe even empower her. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Yeah. So I, I think that pretty much clears up what we've got. Um, there's tons of other characters that have popped up in this whole thing. Yeah. And I, I think we're going to, Oh, did I, uh, did we mention who's playing Monica? No, oh, uh, it's it a, is Tiona Paris. Tiona Paris. Who, uh, the only thing I've seen her in was in Dear White People, the movie, not the series. I Oh, I like the series. I, have, I haven't seen the show, but I saw the movie and she was quite good in it. So oh, I'm excited uh, to see her take on Monica. I think I saw the movie once, but I've I've watched all, let's say, three or four seasons of the of Ooh, the series. It's it really one. good. That's what I've heard. But uh, regardless, that's going to pretty well wrap up our uh, post Disney stockholders, shareholders presentation now i we we really didn't know what we were going to do with our next episode because we're kind of like banking them up to release um but then one of my friends uh got me on facebook and it's like who the hell is gore the god butcher and it's like you know that's a good point you need to educate these folks on what these names are and if we haven't talked about something that you maybe would like us to share some details on us let us know um uh, Put your comments down there. Send messages directly to me, obviously. And uh, that's say, And if you want to know as soon as it comes up, if we take your topic, like us and subscribe. Yeah. See how you segue. Maybe even that? get a notification. Just Who's to bit. say, I don't like notifications. I don't subscribe to them, but maybe you do. Maybe you can get a notification. Maybe you're, yeah, maybe you're a rebel. And uh, we may maybe give us some money on the Patreon. We which, which, yeah, that, that would be nice dollars. if somebody were to do that. <laughs> Oh, that would be nice. Uh, well, you know yeah. what? Maybe let's not get too crazy. Yeah, we're just starting this relationship, you know, for the last year and a half. Yeah, hopefully uh, <laughs> hopefully we'll see you guys soon. I'm getting Gonzalez signing off with uh, Casey Johnson. Casey Johnson.